But one of my favorite things about being a dad is when I get the opportunity to spend time with and bless my kids. How many, how many parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, how many understand what I'm talking about where you just get to, to bless kids? I love it when I get to take my kids on a special donut run. And Essie, our youngest, she calls strawberry milk pink chocolate milk. I want some pink chocolate milk, daddy. I love doing that. I love taking my kids to a new park around the metro that they haven't played at yet and watching them explore. And I love spending time with them and making memories with them. My kids are are three, four, and six years old. And there's this pureness of love that pours out of them. And I, I picked Sam up from school this past Tuesday and we avoid the evil parent pickup line that never moves and you can spend literally an hour of your day picking your kids up and dropping them off. Parents, I'm seeing a lot of yes. We avoid that. We park on a side street and I walk up to a designated area and I wait for Sam to come out and as I'm walking my kindergartner back, he grabs my hand and we're walking and there's kids all around him and there's older kids, fourth and fifth graders. And I just remember in that moment walking Sam I just thought, soak this in, Austin. Remember this moment. And I prayed, God, help me remember this moment. Help, help, me, help me be present in this moment because this isn't gonna always be the case. Eventually, he's gonna look around. Don't say right so loud <laughs> to me. Come on, bring some hope, you know? Good grief. Eventually, he's gonna look around and, and uh, you know, see, well, maybe dad's not as cool as I think he is, or I, I don't wanna hold his hand, or I don't even want him to come pick me up from school. And I don't know why, but I've thought a lot about Tuesday this week. And, and I'm his father, and he's my son, and, and I love him so much, and I cherish every moment that I get to spend with him. And the same goes for my girls. I, I, I love them and I love to be able to pour out my blessings and my attention back on them. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect in giving my children the attention that they need and, and um, like I'm not perfect in that, but it brings me a pure joy when I do. It brings me joy when I am able to bless them and when I am able to, to turn my affections and shower them in words of affection and, and blessings. And I believe that the same is true today, that God, your Father in heaven, has his hand extended and he's waiting for you to take it and he wants to spend time with you. He wants to pour out his blessings upon you. He wants to, to breathe and speak words of affirmation and words of love into your life. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And so before we dive into our text, I just ask you this morning, are you aware that God has turned his face towards you? Are you living in awareness of his presence? Or are you distracted with the temptations and the trials of this life? See, everywhere we go, we see God's fingerprints at work. He wants to pour out his blessing. So this morning, would you just posture your hearts and join me as I pray before we go any further. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would help us become aware of the presence of you in our lives. I pray, God, that you would open up our minds and our eyes and our ears, our hearts, our hands, that we would be ready to receive from you. And I pray, God, that we would accomplish what we set out today to do, and that's to spend time in your presence. It's to spend time worshiping you and glorifying you and bringing glory to your name. And I pray as this mutual affection happens between us and you, God, that your blessings will begin to pour out. I pray that those who have not awakened to the reality that you love them, that you are not angry with them, that you want to forgive them and use them, I pray that they would be awakened to that this morning. And so God, we just ask that you would speak through me in whatever way you want to speak through me this morning. And we would have a spirit to receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Amen. 
Well, one last time, we're going to be taking a look at 1 Corinthians 12, so you can turn there in your Bibles. And uh, how many have enjoyed just learning a little bit more about the spiritual gifts, right? I, I, I enjoy this. I believe that God wants to, to flow in this. But if you don't hear anything else that I say today, I want you to listen to me online, mask on. People here, listen to me. Your pastor simply wants you to spend time and draw closer to God by spending time in his word, spending time in prayer, and spending time in worship. Your pastors want you to walk full of God's love, and we want you to be open to God moving both in and through your lives in whatever way he sees fit. Let's pursue God and be open to all that he has for us this morning. I understand, I am 100% aware and not naive to the fact that there can be confusion and even disagreements when it comes to spiritual gifts and the active role that Holy Spirit plays in our life. But as a church, let's focus on the main thing, and that is drawing closer to God. How many can get behind me with that and just say, I want all that God has for me. Let's, let's lean in, let's, let's pursue him. So I'm gonna ask you to stand as we read one last time, 1 Corinthians 12. If you're watching online, get up. We're gonna read. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the, same, by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. Still to another, the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. You can find your seats this morning. The final three gifts that we'll briefly look at this morning, we are calling the dynamic gifts. So we've talked two weeks ago about the discerning gifts, then we talked about the declarative gifts, and now we are in the dynamic gifts, which are the gifts of healings, miracles, and faith. Now just by a show of hands, how many have either personally experienced or personally witnessed a healing or a miracle in your life. You say, I have experienced that or I have seen that in someone else's. Raise your hand all across this room and you've seen God move in a mighty way, right? That tells me that God is still a miracle working God, that God still heals today. But we ask the question, why does God heal? Why do we get glimpses of heaven? As we live in this church age where there is a war between darkness and evil and light and goodness, why is it that we get glimpses of heaven? Why does God choose to do the miraculous? Why are there healings? And I think Jesus gives us the answer of why we get these glimpses of heaven in Matthew chapter nine. So go ahead and turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter nine, and as you turn there, I'm gonna go ahead and read. You can catch up with me. Starting in verse one. Jesus stepped into a boat, and he crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought, him, brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up and take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to man. Did you catch that in verse six? The purpose of this paralytic man being healed was so that others might know that Jesus had the authority to forgive sins. 
The main purpose in healings and miracles is not to make your life easier. It's not to make your life better. The purpose of miracles and healings is so that God would receive glory. That it would be a moment of testimony and witness so that those who witness it and those who see it can realize that the same God who just performed this miracle, that just moved this mountain, that just performed this healing, has the authority to make you right with God. He can forgive your sins. Church, there are way too many people that are living at odds with God. They have not become right before God's eyes. They have not stepped into the covering blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that God, through miracles, through healings, I believe that he is wanting to open up people's unbelief, open up their eyes so that they might not just believe in healings and supernatural and unexplainable events, but they might believe that they too can receive forgiveness for their sins and they can have a seat in heaven. I have that peace in my heart. I know that I am saved, but your coworker, your friends, your neighbor, your parent, your aunt, your uncle, your children, they might not have that same peace. I want to see healings and miracles begin to take place. I believe just in this example, in Matthew chapter nine, I believe that we see three of the nine spiritual gifts take place. In verse two, we see what I would consider the gift of faith, where these men believed so much that Jesus could heal them, they pick up a paralyzed man on his mat and they bring him and lay him before Jesus. Jesus compliments their faith. And then in verse four, we see Jesus receive a word of knowledge, a message of knowledge, where he knows what those religious leaders were thinking in their hearts, and he calls them out. And then in verse seven, we see the man healed. We see him get up. We see him take his mat and we see him leave. All of these demonstrated gifts led to what? To verse eight. They were filled with awe and they praised God. It was for his glory. I want to see more miracles happen in this place. Why? So that people might praise God, that they would be filled with awe of our wonderful God, the God who spoke the earth into existence, that hung the stars in the sky, is involved in our lives. He takes interest. He has turned his attention upon you. His hand is out waiting for you to reach into it. Will you do that? Will you allow him to walk you through your difficult season? Will you allow him to pour into you the strength and the peace that it takes to get you through what you're going through in this moment. I so want to see God move in might and power. I long for healings to take place. I long for miracles to happen. And I genuinely believe that, that we're on the brink of something happening. But before all of these miracles started taking place, I believe that there was a progression of Jesus' life where we tend to undermine Jesus' humanity. We, we like to see Jesus as just being fully God. Yes, he's fully God, and yes, he's fully man. Ask me to explain that later, and I probably still won't have an answer for you. That's hard for me to understand, right? But I think sometimes we undermine Jesus' humanity in this, and we see in Jesus' ministry that there was a progression. From a child, it says that his godly parents took him to the temple where he would study scriptures. He had the Torah, the first five books of the Bible memorized. Then you see him step out in obedience and he was baptized by water by John and then you see the spirit descend upon him and he was baptized in the spirit. And then in Matthew 3 and, and 4 and in Luke chapters 3 and 4, you, 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 you read about these events and then he goes to the wilderness for 40 days and he does what for 40 days? He fasts and he prays. He seeks the face of God. He draws close to his Father in heaven. 
And it's not until the sequence of events that the miracles start happening. The water turning into wine in Cana didn't happen until Jesus did all of these things. So if that's the progression of Jesus' ministry, where we see him get in the word of God and learn the word of God and know the word of God, and then we see him step in obedience, because some of you need to step out and go public with your faith and get baptized and, and then we see the Spirit fill him up, and then we see him spend ample amount of time with God his Father. That's when all these gifts start flowing through Jesus Christ. How much more and how much more true is that for us today? That if that's the example that Jesus left us, then why are we spending so much time on our phones? Why are we spending so much time in fruitless activity? This, this world is too short. It's too short to waste it with fruitless things. We ought to be filled with the Spirit of God so that God can move through us and his glory be revealed to all creation, to your neighbors. We have left time intentionally in this service to seek more of God, to spend time with the Father, to simply abide in his presence. And, and before the musicians come back up and, and we pray, I just, wanna, I just wanna ask you, who would join with me in believing for revival? Who would join with me in getting serious about seeking and spending time in the presence of God? I can think of individuals in our church that are experiencing personal revival. And when we get serious as a church, individuals, there's these little pockets of revival, all of a sudden fire begins to spread. And I don't want it just to stay here at New Hope. I want it to hit every church in Urbandale. I want it in Johnson and Ankeny and Runnels and, and all the surrounding areas in downtown Des Moines. I want to see a move, a mighty move of God. Tonight, we're gonna be spending some time in prayer and worship. We're gonna be believing for miracles. We're gonna be believing for healings. 9.30, church. We need to be more hungry than just the hour and 10 minutes that you're gonna get this morning. Some of you have been plugged into Sunday school in years past and you have gotten out of the habit. It's time to make some new habits. 9.30 is no doubt the most convenient time to go to church. It's easy with kids, but I'm telling you, if you don't put your kids in Sunday school, they're gonna grow up largely ignorant to the word of God. The Sunday school is not supposed to just replace your discipleship. It's supposed to come along and couple with it and, and support what you're doing. 9.30, do you really want to see revival in your hearts or are you just gonna sit content with the hour and 10 minutes of, of church a week? We shouldn't be content with just being filled up. That should be the starting point. Sunday nights is an opportunity where when we are filled up, we come back and God continues. His, his pouring out of blessings and his presence, it never ends. There's no end to it. He's got more and more and more and more goodness. When are we gonna get hungry enough as a church, as an individual, as a family, to really seek the face of God? I believe that God is is speaking to some people's hearts online. Some of you, it's time to get up and get off the couch and come back and join and be a part of the church that Jesus himself established it. It's time. Before we go back into worship and time of prayer and seeking God, I just wanna tell a personal story. Is that okay if I tell a story? You guys like stories? I see one person over here and I heard one person over here. So I'm talking to you guys. Everybody else, you can just listen in for free, okay? But I'm talking to these guys. Back in 2016, I was able to lead a mission trip to Swaziland. Now, if you're like me, I had no idea where Swaziland was. And if you were to look for Swaziland, you probably still couldn't find it because since then, the country has changed its name to Eswatini. Swaziland is in South Africa, on the far east side, a tiny, tiny, tiny little country. 
And I was able to take 12 people. Can we get that picture up there? And you might recognize some of these faces. So from left to right, I'll just name them. Seth Kahn. Then you've got Rachel and Ben Larson. At the time, they were three months away from being married. Jesse Helmick is standing behind them in the red. Matt Givens is in the pirate's hat. Matt March is in the green shirt. Your beautiful, handsome, smart, funny, charming pastor is in the back with the Yankees hat. God's favorite team. Aaron Collins and Chelsea Collins, which that's the, the trip that they met and fell in love. They weren't dating at that time, so if you're single and ready to mingle, go on a mission trip, I guess. <laughs> then the lady in the green, the green shirt was Carol, and she was our missionary host. And then you've got Kirk Dimmler and Connor and Caden, um, his two daughters on both sides. And then on the far right, you see Karen and Jerry Holty who many of you know them. Um, he was a pastor here in the Des Moines area, and then he's worked with Children's Cup. So we went, we went over there, and we were serving, and, and this was taken on the last day of our trip, our full day on, on the ground in that trip. And none of us quite realized, but a miracle had just taken place. See, just prior to these pictures being taken, we were in this big circle, praying with some, some discipleship students that Jerry and Karen were, were, were uh, training up in the local church and stuff. You can see some of them. And we're in this big prayer circle. And I don't know if you've ever been to another nation, but when really all they have is God, they pray like they depend on God. And it is powerful and it is humbling and it's inspiring. And so we're in this circle. And I don't remember who said, hey, we should pray for healings. But quickly, this group of 20 people or so spread out became a clump of 20 people and spread out. And I don't remember doing this, but Rachel tells me, and Rachel is on the, the left bottom there squatting down. She told me that I push her to the center of that group. That's not her personality. She's, she's not just going to insert herself in ways. She's, she's, her and, and Ben are just phenomenal people. And, and I push her in. See, I, I knew that she needed healing because three years prior to this, she was sitting at a red light. And a teenage boy, whether he was texting or couldn't see with the sun, She's at a complete standstill, and he rear-ended her going 35 to 40 miles an hour. And her neck was messed up. It would cause migraines. It would cause all sorts of pains. She had been to six different doctors, all sorts of treatments. Nothing was bringing relief. And she had just come. I talked with her this week. I asked her if it was okay to share this story. And she had just kind of come to this place to realize, if I can manage my pain, this is probably just how life is going to be from here on out. So as she's in the middle of this clump of people just praying, it was either Ethel or Maria, I'm not sure which one of the locals, she just began to pray and, and just eventually her hand just kind of rested on Rachel's neck. And we have no idea what they're saying in Swahili. And then Karen Holty comes up and begins to pray for Rachel. Has no idea what she's praying for. And, and her arm starts on her shoulder and then eventually just kind of rests on the back of Rachel's neck. Now, during this time, I felt like God was asking me to just circle the group and just begin to pray around the group. And so I just started pacing. Sometimes you don't need to understand why. You just need to step in out in obedience and the why might come later. So I don't know if that was like a Jericho thing where I was marching around and walls were tearing down. I don't know if that was a hedge of protection. It doesn't matter. I was just trying to do what God was asking me to do. And so I'm praying. And in a moment... I just felt so strongly in my spirit. I stopped. I grabbed Jesse Helmick. I interrupted him praying, and he's a passionate prayer. I said, right now, Rachel is being healed. I know it. Her neck is being restored. I can sense it. I can feel it. I know that she is being healed. And then I just went right back to, to circling around and just continuing to pray. And just this powerful time of prayer and worshiping as, as we were together in this group. So we get done praying, we wipe away our tears, we take some pictures, we give hugs, we go out here, we take our final group picture. And Rachel felt like her neck was healed, but how many can imagine that after three years of pain, you wanna make sure that 
you've been really healed and it's not just an emotional high or it's just a good moment where you're not receiving pain in that moment. And so it wasn't until about a month or a month and a half later, I had the mission uh, team into my house and we began to go through pictures and just, you know, recall what God had done on this trip. And Rachel says, yeah, God healed my neck on this trip. And I was like, what? God healed your neck and you didn't tell me? What are you, ah, you know, and start shaking her and hurt her neck. No, I didn't do that. But God healed her. And to this day, she has not had any other symptoms from that wreck. God healed her. Was that a gift of faith? Was that a gift of healing? Was that a miracle? It doesn't really matter. It was God moving in might and moving in power. And I believe that God can do the same thing. I believe that there are people in this room that have struggled with mental illness that you just wonder if God even sees you. The medicines that you've tried, the medicines that you've tried to get on and off, I believe that God can heal and and he wants to this morning. I believe that. But see, as I reflected on this story of, of Rachel, I feel that God made me aware of something that I had completely missed as I was preparing. See, this next picture of this room was a room in our hotel room and every night after dinner, we would just go and we'd debrief. And we'd spend anywhere from one to three hours just praying for one another, singing songs together, worshiping. And it was this powerful moments in these rooms. And God revealed to me and he spoke to me. He says, you know why that this healing took, on the, took place on the last day of you guys being in Swaziland? It's because you guys had spent time in the presence of God, filling up your hearts, letting faith arise, letting the fullness of his spirit begin to permeate and like the slow soaking rain just begin to pour into your lives. We were disconnected from social media. We're disconnected from work. We're disconnected from all the worries and the trivial things that God in in Matthew chapter six tells us to pursue first his kingdom and all these things, all these needs will be given to us. And, And we were removed from all of those distractions and anxieties and and things that rob us of our attention of God. And we just spent a ton of time soaking. It was powerful. It was so powerful. I believe, church, with every fiber within me, that if we reach up to our God, the Father, His hand, and we grab hold of it, and we just, out of the pureness of our hearts, just like my children, Daddy, I want to spend time with you. Dad, will you be with me? Will you turn your attention upon me? And we just, in this pureness, where the created and the creator begin to pour out their love on one another in a pure form. I believe that we'll begin to see miracles. I ask you this question. Are you willing to be used by God to see the miraculous take place in your life? Are you open to God flowing through you so that the miraculous may take place? I believe, and I'd like to believe that everybody's answer to that question this morning would be like, yes, I'm open to God flowing through me. Yeah, I I definitely want that. But the sobering truth is that our actions don't often align with our intentions. What have you done this week? What steps have you taken to align your heart with God's? Have you spent time preparing your heart to receive? Have you spent ample time, just as Jesus demonstrates, with the Father in heaven so that we can have eyes to see the needs around us and we can have ears in how to respond to the needs around us. I'm convinced that sometimes we, and hear hear my heart in this, I believe that sometimes 
we are so busy trying to solve problems that aren't our problems to solve. That could be in an individual level, it could also be in a ministry level. And if we would just have ears to hear, God might lead you down a different road and he just begins to pour out those blessings. Or, or God might just say, hey, your financial situation or this or that or your relational or mental or whatever it is, I've got this, cast your cares upon me, come to me and stop worrying so much about what to do. I'm gonna grab your hand and I'm gonna walk you right through it. Church, do you want more of God? In the eight o'clock service, I felt so strongly that oftentimes we sing songs like we're about ready to sing, I just want more, more of you, God. And God is saying, listen, you can have all of me that you want, but you can't have all of me that you want until you give me all of you. Surrender your unbelief. Surrender your time. Say, well, God, I need you to work between 9.30 and 10.40 every week, God. Surrender your preconceived ideas, your past experiences. Hear me, yesterday's manna is yesterday. God has something fresh for you today. Can you sense it? Can you see it? Can you feel it? you stand across this room as the musicians come and every eye closed and head bowed I just want to give opportunity if there's anyone here that's just said you know Austin I haven't fully surrendered to God maybe maybe it's for the first time you'd say I, I see my need for God and I, I realize that there's nothing that I can do to make peace with God and you'd say, God, enter my life, change my heart, set my feet in, in a new path of righteousness. And maybe that's the first time or maybe you just say, Austin, I've been just slowly drifting and I've been filling my life with fruitless things. It's not necessarily that I've been sinning, but I just need to get back on the path of pursuing Christ. And if that's you this morning of either of those those situations with every eye closed, would you just raise your hand? I wanna pray a blessing on you. Yeah, 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 I see you, young man. You are strong. God sees you and he forgives you and he wants to use you. I know that you know I'm talking to you right now. And I believe that God wants to pour out his blessings and work through you in your friend base. He's got a mission and he's got a call on your life. And you've got some friends that are in dark places and he has called you to work in them. Jesus, I pray right now that every heart would be open to the fullness of your glory. We receive not in part, but the fullness of who you are. And I pray that you would begin to refine our hearts, that you would begin to remove impurities, that you would begin to move in a mighty and powerful way. So Jesus, we need you. Move, increase our faith. We long for you, in Jesus' name, amen. We're just gonna take the next minute or two. We're just gonna begin to pray. I'm gonna ask that you pray. These are not my words. This is a moment between you and God. Close it out. That's why we close our eyes, so that it can be between you and God. And then we're gonna sing a song, and then I'm gonna invite those who want healings or, or need a healing or need a touch from God or a miracle to come forward. We're gonna just open this thing up, and we're gonna go. So for the next minute, let's just pursue after him in your own words. Come on, church. Yes, Jesus. To the person who says in their heart, why not me? I seek, I ask, I long, just can't get there. I pray that God would begin to reveal ways that you can spend time with him in your car, in the workplace, in your conversations 
at work, in your parenting, in your hobbies. I just pray right now that that God would just unveil the clouds and the deception that he has left you or he's forsaken you, but you'd begin to realize and walk in the full glory of God. Pray that people would begin to see you at work in creation, that people would begin to see you at work in other people's lives. There's eight billion people and you have, you have ordained that they would all have life. You are giving all of them breath. And so I just pray that even in the most difficult people in our lives, that we would somehow just be reminded of you and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I'm so thankful that you guys showed up for church. And, and I know I, I, I got on you guys a little bit 930, but it's time. It's time we get in Sunday school. It's time that we are stopped being satisfied with just, just the hour and 10 minutes that we have on Sunday mornings. And we would use that as the platform. That, that, that's just the launching pad. That's the appetizer. That's the calamari. That's the salad with bacon on the side, light dressing. That's just, the steak is coming. I believe it. I hope you'll come back tonight. And I want to remind you, if you do come back tonight, I'm asking that, that you would join me in a fast. I don't know that I mentioned this. But this afternoon, fast from food if you can or something else and use that time to fill yourself up with God. And come back tonight physically hungry. And every time your stomach says, oh, I'm hungry. Every time your, your, your bones just feel like, oh, I'm just weak. And that was hard to get up. Say, God, I need your strength because without your spirit, I'm, I'm spiritually weak. Use those as little remembrance. And let's come back and let's believe for miracles and healings. Would you do that with me today? God bless you. May it shine his face upon you, those joining online. I can't wait to see your face. I've got a big old hug waiting for you right here. So you come on back and God bless you. And we'll see you tonight.